I got a new camera, and as you know, I'm really driven to put out the best quality I possibly can. And this camera does some really awesome stuff, but it's for more a more experienced camera operator. And I just watched some of this stuff back. It's a little out of focus. Now, when I come close and show you the stuff that's important, it is dead on in focus. So I've got to figure out these settings. Please excuse the little bit of fuzziness. It makes me look nicer whenever there's some fuzziness. I got I straight up, you know, I go into that that Instagram Snapchat hot chick mode whenever I got a little bit of that that blemish removal. So anyhow, here we are. We're throwing plastics. We're throwing paddle tails. We're gonna go over my favorite basic retrieves to help you. Catch more fish. So we've got a lot of requests asking about, you know, how I throw plastics, show me how you do it and whatnot. So today we're going to cover paddle tails and rat tails. I have different retrieves for what I'm doing in different kind of water. So what I have here is a quarter ounce jig head on the three inch DOA. I almost always throw a quarter inch jig head out of, I mean, a quarter ounce jig head out of the boat. I like to be able to get deeper, faster, and, and get to the bottom. But if I want to, if I want to cover a higher water column, then I just work it a little bit faster. Now, obviously, if I want to work it slower and higher, I'll go with a lighter jig head. But I'm almost always a quarter. If I'm back in the marshes fishing for redfish, I'm throwing a quarter because I want to be able to reach further out there to get to them if I see them. Um, it, you can get farther away from the boat. There are just many reasons to throw this quarter ounce jig head. Now. I see a lot of people rig this thing all sorts of different ways and on almost every plastic I'm going to come right out of the top of the lure. It, the easiest way to tell the paddle tail is you've got your short end and you've got your long end. This is the top of the lure. I'm going to come out of the top every time. I see people go out of the bottom a lot. Drives me crazy. Does it hurt? Does it help? No telling, but it drives me nuts. So the retrieve I have if I'm fishing trout out of the boat is first things first. that. If I'm fishing trout out of the boat, I'll get it out uh, away from me a pretty good ways. Let it sink just a second. Now with trout, I, I, I pump my rod quite a bit. So I'm either going to kind of reel and give it that, or I'll do a really long one and then reel back down to it. One of the keys to, that, I, that, I, that I've always found very important is whenever you get up here, I'm in a hurry to reel back down to it because often while, while it's doing this, the lure is dropping. Whenever the lure is dropping is a lot of times when you get that bite. So if you get up here and get real lazy with it and just kind of reel them back down, you're going to get that bite and then you're trying to set the hook just like I showed you on the quirky video. So I want my rod tip low as quick as possible. And the way that I really like to throw it for redfish is I'll throw it out and then the redfish is more of a straight retrieve. With every once in a while I'll just give it a little twitch twitch just to maybe invoke a reaction strike. But I'm going to throw a lot more straight retrieve with the paddle tail. The paddle tail does a lot of the work for you. If, if you're not real comfortable throwing plastics and and you know all the different different techniques that are out there, the paddle tail, just a straight retrieve with one of these every once in a while, the paddle tail is going to do a lot of the work for you. So it's a it's a really versatile lure. You can throw really big ones, really small ones. Um, for redfish, I like the little three inches. For trout, I'll throw the three inches, four inches, five inches. Doesn't really matter. Now on to on to the rat tail baits. This is the Kelly Wiggler ball tail shad. I've been having a lot of success on this one lately in this red and white color. I'm not trying to keep any secrets from you guys. I want you guys to catch fish just like me. Again, I'm coming out the top of it. Okay, I, the, the bottom, even when there's a slit in your lure, the slit is for weedless setups, which we'll cover in a later video. That slit isn't for your jig head to come out of. So you can see the belly here. So quite obviously that's the top of the lure. This is an eighth ounce knotty hooker jig head. And again, this is the uh, Kelly Wiggler ball tail shad. Now this one requires a little bit more work. I really like this one whenever I'm seeing any kind of a uh, sand eel, shrimp, anything like that. But this lure is gonna depend on you to do the work. So I'm gonna let it sink and I'm gonna give it a more aggressive uh, pop pop. That's my, that's my number one retrieve with this, with the rat tail of any sort, is let it fall and then give it a couple quick snaps and let it fall again. And what it's doing is that lures darting here and there and here and there and then it's falling. So to me, in my opinion, what that's gonna look like more than anything <coughs> is a, a shrimp popping and trying to get away from things and you're gonna get a lot, a lot of reaction strikes out of this. Now, whenever I first started fishing these straight tails, what I would do is, like I showed you with the paddle tails, I would just pick it up, throw it myself at the boat. I would 
just pick it up and let it fall. Pick it up and let it fall. That can be that can be more of a sand eel or maybe just a you know a hurt mullet that's kind of shooting around. But that was a, a really good retrieve for me, and I still use it from time to time. But again, when you get up here, you want to hurry up and get back down to it because when it falls, it's usually whenever you're going to get that hit. Now, I, I do want to eventually where we've got the clear water and you can see the bait starting around. The water's a bit off color today. Um, it just it won't it won't justify it. I know a lot of people do it in the swimming pools, but the reason that I hate the swimming pools is these lures, it, whether it be a quirky, a top water, anything, whenever they're you're on a short retrieve, you're going to get a different action out of them. It, it, it's a, it's a totally different deal than what that lure is doing out there. So it's not really giving you a true. This is what that lure is doing way out there. They're they're very simple. Don't overthink them. You know, put more thought into how heavy of a weight you're putting on it than all these different things you're trying to do with that lure. Now, as with everything, whenever you're, you're fishing and, and you get a bite, try to replicate what you were doing on that last cast because something you did, you know, set them off there. But I got old Steve, the fish whisperer down here. He's helping me find them. That's, that, that's, the, that's, the, true, that's the true hero here. I bet y'all never had a dog that would point when there's a fish in front of you. Oh, ah, I'm just kidding. There's no fish here. But anyway, so that's it. Straight tails, paddle tails. Again, you know, this is a Kelly Wiggler rat tail. Bass Assassin makes them there. There's all kinds of them out there. But, uh, you know, rig them right. I, I tie them straight on with braid. I very rarely ever throw a leader. I'll just use that Palomar knot that I showed you on my knot tying video. But that's it. It's that simple. It's that easy. Go find some bait. Find some slicks. Find some color changes. Drift through it slowly. Throw your paddle trail. Throw your rat tail. In, in deeper water, I'm throwing a rat tail more often than the paddle tail. I'm throwing in the shallower stuff. But that's just me. Everybody's got their own different ways of doing it. So get out there, get your plastics out, find some fish, and we will catch you on the next one.